Okay, today we're gonna to talk about the new Google Glass Enterprise Edition number two, and we're gonna build a little app for them. Android Studio Web View Tutorial. So first of all, these glasses are extremely light. Um, they have eight hours of battery life. So this is actually something that you could legitimately wear all day and like do normal activities. The screen you look at is extremely small and it's at the top right of your field of view. These are obviously not meant to be like immersive AR glasses, but these things do have some real like real world utility. They do have a touchpad on the side here that supports tapping and swiping in any direction, as well as uh, double finger swiping in any direction. On first load, you do get some preloaded apps. There's no built-in screen recording, so I'm using screen copy or SCRCPY to mirror the screen via USB-C to my MacBook Pro. The first thing we need to do with these things is get them connected to the internet. So you can go to settings, Wi-Fi, and then go to qifi.org on your computer, put in a network name and a password, and generate a QR code. Hit scan QR code in the glasses, and that will get us connected. Now, the first app is this video calling demo, which is actually really impressive. And I could see this being really useful for people working out in the field that need to get like remote hands-free instructions on how to do something. They also have a UI example, a gallery example for viewing media in your glasses, and a camera sample that allows you to take pictures and record video with the glasses. Now, from a developer perspective, these things run on Android Oreo 8.1, which is API level 27. So unlike the original Google Glass, which used an SDK called the Glass Developer Kit, or GDK, that had to be installed with Android Studio. So originally, my idea for making something with these glasses was I wanted to make a Unity plugin that like, you could take a little screenshot with the glasses that would send the camera image back to Unity. We could run that through some kind of like Onyx ML model and then get the result and send that back to the glasses to be displayed. But Honestly, I couldn't really think of a good use case. One thing I've always wanted to make for a pair of glasses like this is something where I can like do research on the go. So maybe I'm doing household chores or like I'm walking my dog and I don't have a computer in front of me, but I still want to research like why my code's not working. Maybe I'm like a psychopath or something, but there's so many instances where like I want to do research, but I can't have my computer with me. So today we're going to make a little web view app that allows you to browse the web inside these glasses and perform searches with your voice. Android Studio web view tutorial. I have literally zero experience doing straight Android dev. I don't know, hopefully it's not too hard. So when we go to developers.google.com slash glass dash enterprise, the first thing we're presented with is an update firmware button. Of course I didn't do that and you'll see that bite me in the ass later. Now, if we go to guides, you can see that they have info on what types of inputs and sensors the device supports, as well as a user interface guide. So if you wanna come up, come up with ideas on what to build or see what's possible, this is a good first place to look. Let's start a new Android Studio project with an empty activity and set the API level to 27. In the activity XML, let's replace the text view with a web view. Now let's set up our manifest. Uh, we need to add internet permission and clear text traffic for the web view to work. We need to add some metadata so our touch inputs work for the glasses, and we also need to add this line here so our app shows up in the Google Glass app directory. So if we go to the samples tab in the developer guide, we can go to their GitHub link and find the gesture control example. This will allow our touch controls to work. Let's steal this gesture detector class and put it in our app. In our main activity, we can implement onGestureListener, create a private class variable. In the onCreate function, we can make a new instance of that class, add the dispatch touch event function and add a massive switch statement that will handle all of our interactions. So on swipe down, the app will close. On tap, we'll listen for voice input. Swipe forward and back, we'll scroll the web view. Two finger swipe forward, we'll click the closest link. And two finger swipe backward, we'll call back on the web view. So back in the developer guide for the user interface, they recommend using full screen UIs with no action bar. So in the Android developer docs, I found some code to do that. So let's just add that in as well. Now we need to get the voice search working. So let's go back to the GitHub examples and click on the voice recognition sample. Let's add this function to request voice recognition and add the request code at the top. We can also add this on activity result function that will give us the results of the text, which we can save in a variable, uh, let's call it speech result. Now from our massive switch statement, let's add a call to request voice recognition when the touchpad is tapped. Now this is where not updating the firmware bit me in the ass because this function was not getting called. If we click home and update firmware, you can see the flashing instructions. So here I just clicked flash next to the latest version and followed the prompts to update the firmware on my glasses. You just need to have ADB installed for this to work. And then after that on activity result was getting called and working as expected. Now the last thing we need to do is to get our web view working with everything. So let's create a private web view at the top 
And in the onCreate, we can tie it to the XML file, enable JavaScript, and load a default URL. When we get a speech result, we want to search Google with those words, so we can append the speech result to google.com slash search question mark Q equals. Now let's fill out all the functionality in our switch statement. So on swipe down, uh, we'll just call finish to close the app because that seems to be the convention that the other glass apps use. On swipe forward, we can scroll the web view on the Y axis by 100 and do the same thing in the opposite direction for swipe backward. On double finger swipe backward, we can just call go back on the web view. Now for clicking links, this was a challenge and I tried a few different methods here. I'm pretty sure this was not the right decision, but it works pretty decent. So on Stack Overflow, I found a function someone posted for simulating clicks on the screen programmatically. So let's throw that in our app with all the other code that we stole from Google and call it inside double swipe forward. For the x-axis, let's just click on the first 25% of the screen because that's where most of the links seem to be in Google. And for the y-axis, let's just go in the middle of our web view. This seemed to work pretty well. So yeah, that's it. Let's uh, test this hodgepodge of code that we didn't write. Google Glass tutorial. Cool. It looks like everything's working. So we can scroll down, we can scroll up. I want to click on one of these videos. Cool. That works. It tapped to unmute. So if we just swipe forward again, that should tap to unmute. Cool. And then let's test the back. Two finger scroll back. And now we're back where we started. Beautiful. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh, definitely let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next one. Goodbye.